Welcome to uh, Matripa College via Zoom. And of course, I am not at Matripa College. I am far away. But anyway, they are our wonderful hosts. And uh, we're very grateful to them for hosting Discovering Buddhism, Transforming Problems. And tonight, we're going to be doing mostly just meditation. And so um, if anybody gets lost or you want more context, the previous sessions are all available on YouTube. And because we're doing thought transformation in particular, we're going to start with a thought transformation for our motivation. And so looking down at point three through seven of seven point mind training, we're going to use Lama Chupa's verse 96. So you don't need to read if you don't want to, but it's on the screen. Just think, even if the environment and beings are filled with the fruits of negativity and on wished for sufferings pour down like rain, I seek your blessings to take these miserable conditions as a path by seeing them as causes to exhaust the results of my negative karma. In short, no matter what appearances arise, be they good or bad, I seek your blessings to transform them into a path increasing the two bodhicittas through the practice of the five forces, the quiescence of the entire Dharma, and thus to meditate only on mental happiness. And then refuge in bodhicitta. Sangge Judam Sogi Junam La Janchu Padu Zani Kapsuchi Dagi Chunyan Gi Pesonam Ki Trola Penchi Sangge Drupasho Sangge Judam Sogi Junam La Janchu Padu Zani Kapsuchi Dagi chunyan ki pe sonam ki Drola penche sangge drupa sho Sangge chudam so ki chunam na Janju badu dane gapsu chi Dagi chunyan ki pe sonam ki Drola penche sangge drupa sho and allow that motivation to settle in. And then shift your focus to the breath. Just the breath, allow the surface distractions to settle. You're not going to agree or disagree with any of your thoughts. You're not going to suppress them or feed them. You're just letting them go like clouds in the sky, keeping your focus tethered to the breath. Anytime you get sucked into your thoughts, you consciously disengage and come back to the breath.
deciding not to reminisce, not to anticipate, just very gently and steadily staying in the present with your breath. Don't put any energy into adding or subtracting thoughts. Just choose not to give them your interest. If your breathing is shallow, you simply know that it is shallow. If your breathing is deep, you simply know that it is deep. Just be with it without judgment. Notice that you have thoughts without reacting to them. Just stay with the breath. Allow calmness and clarity to reassert themselves naturally. Nothing forced.
and then we very gently shift to analysis. And there's no need to open your eyes. But if later you want to review the verses I'm talking about, they will be on the screen. But for now, just be with them. From Guide to a Bodhisattva's Way of Life by Master Shantideva. Unruly beings are as unlimited as space. They cannot possibly all be overcome. But if I overcome thoughts of anger alone, this will be equivalent to vanquishing all foes. And so just sit with your everyday experience of problem solving, of conflict management, of human dynamics. Is there a part of our mind that forgets impermanence as well as forgets the vast number of sentient beings and somehow fools ourselves into believing everything could come into perfect harmony in our life and then stay there fixed? Is there that slightly irrational part of ourself that really does believe stability and harmony externally can be achieved? Just check. Thinking about the way we view conflict and delay and inconvenience, how very different it is when your mind is assuming that plans will be disrupted, that people will not be harmonious, that things will change. Like if you're preparing for a long road trip and you already know that a huge stretch of road will have construction. You might prepare yourself. You might have a wonderful conversation with your car mates. You might play something nice. But if you didn't expect the delay, how frustrated when you see the road construction. There can be a rage, how dare they? delay my progress. Whereas when you're expecting it, or your mind is smooth in response to the unexpected, then you just think, of course, delays. What's more, this road is being made better for me and for everyone who travels on it. How kind these people are to work in the hot sun. how hard it must be for these people to work in this way. I'm in a comfy car. So just take an example of something like that. The difference in your mind when you expected inconvenience, when you expected the unexpected or disruption, as opposed to those times where you assumed things would go smoothly. You expected them to and held tightly to a plan. Just contrast those two aspects of yourself and how your mind was.
You can also contrast with some experience of being in a crowd of people who all are inconvenienced at the same time. And it was one of those magic days where something cracked in the social fabric and strangers began to speak to each other, laughing about the inconvenience, laughing at themselves for assuming that there wouldn't be. Maybe you're all waiting for something like a concert or maybe you're stuck in the grocery store and there's long, long lines. And something shifts where people stop thinking, I am being inconvenienced. This is happening to me. And they open out and think, this is happening to us. And there's that lift in the atmosphere that connection in the heart. And what was something that you initially didn't want to happen turned into something really lovely. So again, reminding yourself of your own wisdom by using some sort of memory or logic of how much better things are when the focus shifts off of the eye into us. Especially when that us is without any sense of them. And then conclude, where would I possibly find enough leather with which to cover the surface of the earth? But wearing leather just on the soles of my shoes is equivalent to covering the earth with it. Likewise, it is not possible for me to restrain the external course of things. But should I restrain this mind of mine, what would be the need to restrain all else? So just letting those verses sink in. Then a mind filled with bodhicitta, altruism, compassion, is also a protected mind for you as an individual. Then there are no enemies no inconveniences, no matter what is happening externally, you have your peace. And from that place of peace, you have creativity if an external solution is needed. So just be with your own personal truth of your experience of this. What is a protected mind for me as an individual?
and think may all the energy I put into these thoughts go towards those aims. All the way to their utmost extent. Enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, so you can relax your attention. And if you need to change positions or shift, does anyone have any immediate impressions or um, hanging doubts before we shift gears to another meditation? Anything that is right on the surface of your mind? Yeah, it goes straight to the heart. Um, if you had any insights that you really want to keep um, that you don't feel comfortable sharing, also go ahead and just write down a little note to yourself so that you can revisit some of those ideas. When we look at verses like this from Shantideva, a few things can come to mind. One can be how innovative and practical and amazing Shantideva is. But also what can occur to us is sometimes a, a noticing our own deficiency or inability to do this, or all the times that we knew better, we knew we should do this, and then we didn't, and we feel bad about ourselves. Or, for example, in the last verse, we might see this as some sort of call to not act. You know, it's not possible for me to change external things, so I'm not going to even try. So these are some of the sort of resistance thoughts or confused thoughts that can come in response to this kind of analysis. So, you know, we remember that with, with all of these Lojong teachings that it is a, an invitation for inner work. When your inner work is well organized and well centered and you have the strength to maintain your peace of mind, then you can add more and more levels of disruptive chaos in your life to your practice, and it still doesn't rock the steadiness or the peace of your mind. So it's not like you're, you know, chasing inconvenience or chasing hardship, of course not. But it means that as your mind really, really integrates this idea that everything difficult can be transformative. Everything hard that I didn't want can be the very thing that opens my heart wider. The more we repeat that thought again and again from a million different angles, the stronger and more robust our mind and our heart are in response to everyday conflict. Things just don't get to us. Then, you know, there can be the things don't get to us very often because we've been doing this a long time. And then when something does, we're so disappointed in ourselves. You know, we think, oh, I thought I was better than this. I've been, you know, thinking about these things for years from a million different angles, from psychology, from poetry, from Buddhism, from everything. And how is it that after all these years, I still lose my temper or I still lose my peace? And I think it's really important to remember that Dharma practice is linear-ish, <laughs> right? Linear-ish. You go forward and then you go back and then you go forward and then you go back. But also when you lose connection with your path, you might be just as quote bad as you ever were before you met the path. You might actually be that bad and it's a shock to you. And then you forget that that worst version of you used to happen a lot. And now it happens, you know, once every five years or something. So, you know, you're shocked at yourself that you could lose it in that way that you thought you were totally finished with. And then you forget that actually the frequency of losing mindfulness and the strength of your afflictions has really shrunk over time. So when you do lose it, you know, you might lose it as bad as you ever did, or you might internally lose it as bad as you ever did, but you can guard your speech better, you know, hopefully. But, you know, every once in a while, people just, 
you know, blow their top. Give yourself that forgiveness. Give yourself that kind of grace. Yeah, I know these aren't Buddhist words that we use very often, but they are woven in, which is to understand that everything is easier through familiarity. So if it's not easy, it's not familiar. Yeah, not you're bad, not you're deficient, not it's something you're missing. Yeah, it's just needs more repetition. Yeah. So when you've done a meditation like this, after the meditation is finished, just kind of sit with your knowing of the truth of it for a second. You know, maybe there's a phrase like, why am I trying to cover the whole world with leather when I could just be wearing shoes? <laughs> you know, you can just summarize it into your own words and just be right. All day I was putting out fires and putting out fires and fixing this and emailing that and texting this. And oh, if I had started with, how about I just reconnect with my own peace of mind? how urgent would all of those other seeming fires be? Would they actually be fires to be put out? Or maybe only one of them and the rest of them could wait, <laughs> you know? And maybe they would solve themselves and maybe they didn't even need my interference or input. Maybe a lot of things would just settle by themselves, you know? Um, and so you just kind of sit with that knowing of, oh yes, even today, even today I forgot, <laughs> you know? And, Again, yeah, just have some kindness with yourself. Okay. 